people are obsessed with Vikings, and don't get me wrong, I do get it to an extent, but they are also regarded as some of the most brutal peoples to have ever existed. Between the raiding of seaside towns and their non-stop slave trade, there was a lot of shady stuff going on. Well buckle up, cause today we're counting down the top 10 dark things Vikings did in ancient history, and trust me, some of these are not for the faint of heart. Starting us off at number 10 is burial gifts. As I mentioned already, a huge part of Viking culture was their massive network they had in place to trade slaves. In fact, it's believed that pretty much their entire economy was built off of it. Many were sold off of course, but a huge number remained under the Norsemen's jurisdiction to be given to the high ranking citizens. But what happened to them once their masters died? Well, apparently they were sacrificed and given to the dead masters as a burial gift. It was believed that if the slave was sacrificed for the funeral of their master and buried with them, that the slave would follow its master into the afterlife and continue its duties serving them. This practice wasn't confirmed entirely until pretty recently, around the 1980s, after a group of burials were found where obviously high status burials were accompanied beside a clearly low status one. How could they tell which was which? Well, charmingly, Vikings would decapitate the slaves before placing them beside their masters so as to make it clear who was of a higher social class. Coming in at number 9 is Berserker. Vikings were known for being ruthless killing machines, so much so that the state in which they would enter during their near daily raids got named Berserker, as they well went berserk. But it's widely believed that they didn't just go into their wild killing sprees fancy free and sober, but were actually under the influence to help them achieve their goal of butchering the whole city. One theory published that Vikings entered this berserker state by ingesting psilocybin mushrooms, or magic mushrooms. The theory is that the hallucinogens allowed them to disconnect from reality as well as increase their adrenaline levels, sending them into their so called berserker state. This isn't to say that magic mushrooms are going to send anyone who ingests them into a massive killing spree at all, but since that was the Vikings' intention going into it, these mushrooms simply allowed them to perhaps hallucinate a slightly different reality, making the job of raiding and stealing people a little bit less taxing. But again, it's just a theory at this point. Coming in at number 8 is house bears. So this one actually makes a lot of sense if you think about it. I mean really, it is hard to imagine a vicious viking coming home to cuddle with a little cat or dog. But how did they manage to get their hands on bears in the first place? Well, on days where there weren't cities to invade or slaves to torture, they would raid bear dens and steal the cubs away from their mothers before bringing them home to raise as their own. I mean, truly only a viking could find a way to get a cub away from its mother without being disemboweled. There were some limits to these wild pets however, as even for the vikings this was seen as pretty out there. Often the non-viking members of the community objected to this as they feared the bears would attack their families, eat their livestock, or ruin their crops. If the bear ever proved to be out of hand, the viking in charge of it would be issued a pretty hefty fine. Eventually too many bears were, well, honestly just being normal bears, and things got so out of hand that the practice became outlawed. If only they had had similar sympathy for all the people they killed. Coming in at number 7 are swimming games. It wasn't all raiding, pillaging, and slave trading when it came to vikings, even they too needed a break from that sometimes. Well. Sort of. In their free time, Vikings would often play games in the water, which they referred to as swimming. Now let me be clear. Game is a very loose term here. I am sure they were having a blast, but quite literally no one else on the planet would want to do this for fun. You see what Vikings called swimming, most would describe as let's see which Viking can drown the other Viking first. The rules were simple, hold your opponent under the water for as long as possible. First one to kill the other wins. Now these games weren't mandatory, the men were more than welcome to stop playing whenever they wanted, so the general sentiment was that it's sucks to suck if you get killed, that's your own fault. Sounds like a nice breezy way to spend your afternoon, don't you think? <laughs> 
Coming in at number 6 is Viking soup. As you can imagine, injury was a very common occurrence among the Norse communities. They were just about always in battle, and even when they were off duty, their games involved a fight to the death. This means that the wives, mothers, sisters, and daughters of all the Viking warriors became quite knowledgeable about medicine and wounds over time. Specifically, Viking women developed a very unique way to gauge just how bad a stab or a slash wound was. The ladies would make a super, super strong onion soup that they would feed to the injured warriors. Then after the men ate the soup, the women would smell the wounded area. If they were able to smell the broth through the gash, they knew it was too deep. He would be marked as a lost cause and they would do nothing to save him. Only the men with no smell coming through their wounds received remedies. So what do you say? Should we bring this one back or? Next up at number five is home gang. Viking law was, let's just say, a little bit all over the place. The systems they had in place would not hold up in a court of law today. For example, a lower class individual could under absolutely no circumstances insult anyone of a higher class. But killing your neighbor, well, that wasn't necessarily off limits. This practice was referred to as home gang, and it was pretty much the Viking version of a duel. A man who felt wronged by another could challenge him to a fight. The fight had to take place within a week, and someone could take the challengee's place as long as it was decided prior to the fight. Rules of the fight itself varied from region to region, but usually included how many weapons were allowed, who struck first. First, what signified the winner and the compensation for the victor. Often the home gang would only be finished after one man had died. And if the man who was challenged didn't show, well, things did not end well for them. They would automatically be declared guilty and anyone from any social class was legally allowed to kill them. Meaning under the right circumstances, a slave could kill a noble and be completely within their rights to do so. Coming in at number four is the sale of eunuchs. As I mentioned, Vikings were notorious for raiding seaside cities. One of their more frequented hotspots upon their ruthless invasions were monasteries. Not because they held any kind of deep disdain for Christianity. Well, actually, who knows? That could have been part of it too, honestly. But mostly it was because they could guarantee that their kidnappees would be literate men. Let me explain. At the same time that this was happening, there was a high demand for eunuchs from the Middle East to be put to work as teachers, harem guards, government workers, and palace servants. So in came the Norse pirates who would raid the Christian monasteries, kidnap the literate men, castrate them, then sell them off to be put to work in the East. The eunuch part was so important because they were viewed as more trustworthy, having been stripped of their manhood, and literacy was required for the jobs they would be forced into. I mean, it's just truly sick from top to bottom. Coming in at number three is human sacrifice. Vikings widely practiced pagan beliefs, wherein they worshipped multiple different gods. One of these gods was Odin. To make sure that they were still in Odin's good graces, every nine years, Vikings would assemble and sacrifice 99 people, horses, dogs, and hawks, before they were hanged from the trees of the Holy Grove. Which, if that's true, that is like a whopping 396 sacrifices total to be completed once every decade. Now, that number could be exaggerated, for sure, but the actual practice really did happen all the time. Archaeologists have uncovered sacrificial sites on the land once inhabited by the Norsemen, filled with both animal and human bones alike. And contrary to a popular story of the time, it was not a self-sacrifice. During the 10th century, there is a tale of a slave girl who tried to get out of the sacrifice and instead of being used in a sacrifice for Odin, was dragged to her execution. And before they killed her, she was taken advantage of publicly by six different men so as to teach her a lesson of trying to evade the sacrifice to Odin. Coming in at number two, Ausa Vatni. The Vikings had 
some really, really dark practices. But this one might just be one of the saddest. After a new life was welcomed into the world, a christening of sorts called Ausavatni would be performed, where they would essentially announce their name and welcome them to the community. But not just anyone received such treatment. Parents would examine the new life first and decide if it was worth keeping or if they should just leave it to die in the harsh exposure of nature. Unsurprisingly, more often than not, the ones they chose not to raise were almost exclusively female. It's recorded that Viking households were often four to one with men outnumbering women, which I can only imagine caused problems later in life when new lives were being created. Shockingly, this practice wasn't even viewed as cruel or killing even. They believed as long as the person in question hadn't been through Ausavatni, that all was a-okay. And last up in our number one spot today is the Blood Eagle. Vikings are pretty well known for their cruel treatment of, well, whoever they wanted dead. But the absolute worst thing that could happen to you was the Blood Eagle. Now warning, this one is ugh, incredibly disgusting. So. Don't say I didn't warn you. The Blood Eagle was a torturous execution that basically involved carving up someone's body to resemble, well, an eagle. Essentially what they would do was splay open your rib cage so that they looked like wings and to be clear they did this to you while you were still alive and with obviously no pain meds. After turning you into a human bird because apparently that wasn't enough torture, they would then pour a salt solution into the open wound before pulling out your lungs and arranging them over the wings so they could watch them flutter like birds until you died. I actually can't even with this one. Like, I, I don't know what you needed to do to receive such a brutal torture, but my god, it's just one of the most horrific things I've ever read about. Thank god that does not happen anymore. Thank you so much for watching today, guys. My name is Kennedy. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button below and make sure to drop in the comments if you know of any other crazy dark stuff that the Vikings did. I can't wait to read about it. See you next time. Mm -hmm.